oh, hello, many Magic the Gathering players or many Commander players specifically have a problem with what's known as the Commander Arms Race. What is it? How can you stop it? Can it even be stopped? Or, or just maybe, should it be embraced? We're going to discuss all of these topics and more today. I have with me Dave Kosin, a columnist for Cool Stuff, Inc., personal trainer extraordinaire and all-around commander aficionado who has many opinions, all of them strong, about the arms race that so often takes place in Commander. Dave, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. This is, my, this is, this is, a, this is a great pleasure. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. Let's just start for the two people who play Commander and have not already been subjugated to this horrible thing that starts to happen in playgroups, which is the arms race. Let's just start by talking about what is it. What do we mean when I say the command are already people are, can you believe my playgroup is doing this to my poor deck? But let's start with just what is, what do we mean when we say the Commander Arms Race? I think I, there's a lot of ways you can define sure. it. But I think, I think what we're talking about is here's a new toy uh, and I, I got to get it in. I got to play with it. It's, it's stronger than what I have now. It's better than what's in my deck right now. It's a better Commander. It's better removal. It's better whatever, better ramp. It's always better ramp. But um, it's here and it's available. So therefore, I must use it. Okay, but why is that a problem? So, so somebody you said better removal or better ramp. We've we've got let's probably a new commander product or maybe a draft set comes out, and well, that's a better removal, strictly better. Uh, I'm going to swap out one card from my deck to swap in a better card into my deck. What is the problem with that? What is this ripple effect that that starts to have? I think I think you hit on my point. It's not that it's a problem in and of itself. It's a it's a ripple effect because it's never just that one card. It's ne because we have products coming every three weeks. It feels like at this point, there's always something coming. This is all, this is a game that's almost thirty years old. And I think one thing to get to get out of the way up front is I acknowledge and accept that in a game that is this old and still thriving the power level is going to increase over time. It's silly to think that, I mean, look at creatures from the 90s in Magic. They were garbage. Creatures creatures were awful. I think Hey now, Craw Worm was amazing, and I will hear nothing about Craw Worm or Sheevan Dragon. I was about to say apologies to Sheevan Dragon, but yes. but I mean it's 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 naive and it's and it's Pollyanna to, to say, oh well, you know, we should keep the power level exactly the same. It's going to evolve over time. I think in Commander, though, where we get the problem is it is that ripple effect in that, you know, we talk about what's the arms race. It's, it's okay, well, I've, I, here's this card, and I'm going to put it in. Now my deck got better. And here's my, my, my playgroup mate. Oh, well, now my deck's got to get better. Right. To and keep around up. the table. And, it, and where does it stop? And where should it stop? Should it stop at all? Um, where, how do we balance the uh, excitement for and pressure of these wonderful, terrifying new toys that we get all the time with what this format fundamentally is, is meant to be, and what it means to a lot of players. And I think that's, that's where this discussion comes in because there are a million different things at play here. This is not a zero-sum thing at all. Right. I think pressure is uh, an often overlooked aspect of the arms race because people often feel targeted by the arms race, that the new sets or the new cards or even just some of the older, more expensive busted cards that they won't do strictly better versions of, that whatever the source of those better cards is, is that people feel, oh man, this person in my playgroup is just souping up, ramping up their deck, and in order to keep up with it, I have to do this. But I also feel this huge pressure. One of the things I initially loved about Commander was the fact that even though new cards were always coming out in so many sources, I could build a Commander deck and stick it on my shelf and one year or even two years later, still take it down off the shelf and play with it without having made major changes to it. And then what started to happen all of a sudden was people would say, wow, you're not running X. And I would say, oh yeah, X is good. And they go, well, it's not just good. You're running you know, Z here and, and X is one less than Z and does the exact, it's literally just Z, but for one less mana, why are you not running it? And then, oh wow, look at all of these cards that need to be 
update. And it's like, oh, how embarrassing. I haven't, you know, like put in the new, the new ramp spell, the new removal spell that's just a strictly better version of this or the same version, but with an upside or whatever the thing is. And so it's not just fear of getting trounced at the table, but looking like I've got this archaic, out-of-date deck. And I think, you know, anybody who knows me at all knows that I'm on a crusade against things like you should be playing, why aren't you playing, overrated, must play, stop playing. Um, and that's no that's no slight to you because it, it, I love well, you. That would be a slight to me. I just want to make oh, sure. So all, the, all the videos I do every You're Right, I mean, day. you know, it's... Right. But I, I think that's, that's part of the ecosystem of anything like this, right? right. We want, we love to talk about the things we love, the things we don't like, and why this yeah. is better than that. I get that. But I think what has started to happen now that we're in sort of the era of the Commander Arms race, um, as we close out the year of Commander, is that those terms get loaded, right? Like, why aren't you playing? Like you said, becomes you should be embarrassed because you're not playing that. You're sure. doing it wrong. Well, no one ever actually said you should be embarrassed. They don't that was say the that. Voice, that was the voice in my head. Correct. That also comments on my physical appearance when I look in the mirror and things like that. That's a that's a whole other no, but story. That's, but that's it. Yes. That, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's, right. No one's ever going to say that. Right. No one. I mean, and if they do, they're a jerk. And right. You shouldn't and play you magic should, with them. Right. But no one's ever going to say that explicitly. But that's how we receive it. That's how we. That's why I also. I. I. You'll never hear me describe Commander as casual, because casual has become a loaded word, almost, almost a a a, a pejorative, um, in a lot of contexts, and what I've seen uh, in the discourse. So I prefer social, but like that's an example, right? Like there are these things that we say, and we're talking about stuff, and it gets received by our ears as, well, you're doing something wrong. You made a mistake. You need to fix this. You need to keep up, like you said, and that pressure to keep up or to optimize or do the best thing or the better thing always is exacerbated by the fact that we are being flooded with better stuff. And as you mentioned too, it's not just new stuff, it's the old stuff. You know, ev every commander player is is going to look at a guy as cradle with a little glint in their eye, right? Sure. Like and, and you know, if I could if I could get a good deal on a kidney, I'd love to go get a guy as cradle. The fact is Commander, what I love about Commander and what I know a lot of people love about Commander is it is the format where you can build a deck out of what's in your box right now. You can build a deck out of a seal box. You can build a deck out of draft chaff. You can build a deck out of whatever. You can upgrade a precon. You can play a precon as it is. Um, and, it sh and you should be able to have a good experience with it. The trick now is that we're getting... So Commander Legends is, is the current thing and that's been, been a big topic of discussion for Commander players. And I will say... Um, 99% of this set I'm in love with. Um, oh, yeah, me I think too. I think they did a fantastic... I was terrified about the partners because I hate partner existentially. And I think, by and large, they did a good job with a couple of problematic exceptions. Um, but the set overall, I think, is going to be a hit. Yeah. Um, and, I'm, and I think Wizards should be commended for that work. But, but, when, but there are problems in there, and we'll get, right. into, we'll get into some of them. And then what's next? And then yes. what's next? And then what's next? Well, I, and there's always something next. I keep I keep saying what I, I so I I really was dreading what was going to happen in Commander Legends, and I was so happy that my fears were 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 not founded because actually I think they did a, a, a there's a, you know we can all point at one or two cards, but you can do that in a draft set. Absolutely, on math, uh, you can <laughs> do that in a draft set as well. There's always one or two cards for anything that that that's going to happen for. But I thought everything was going to be like that in Commander Legends. And it turned out, no, it, it, it is a really fun looking set. And I think they did a wonderful job. I am worried about that idea of what comes next. And one of the things I keep waiting for is when they're going to make like Commander Legends 2, well, we did all the partners in Commander Legends. What's next? How did we get, we gotta, it's losing its sparkle. I know we're gonna have three legendary partners so that you can have three legendary creatures in your command zone. It's going to be the Sen triplets, but we're going to name them and each one gets a name finally. And then they are going to partner each have their own each individual card and they'll partner with each other so that it's balanced like one card and it's just going to be this gimmick and it's no, no, oh. slow down. It's kind <laughs> of like how, how many razor blades are we up to on our, on our, our, our shaving razors now? Six. <laughs> it, it's just like, well, what are we going to do? Stick another razor on there. It's the mock 
seven. You know, <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> uh, but that's a great analogy. <laughs> yeah, because you 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 do have. Speaking of pressure, I think Wizards feels a pressure that we have to keep wowing them with something new and with so much product coming out in general that becomes more and more over the top. I want to real quick rewind to Guy's Cradle and ask you a subjective question. Yeah. Let's say I have my playgroup because we're talking about the arms race. We've got our playgroup. I love Commander and I do have my eye on that guy's cradle and I save up my money and you know people spend do you know how much a set of golf clubs costs? Do you know oh, how my, much yeah. like like if if we were in the before times where we could go out to the movies if I liked going out not to matinee shows but to you know the premium shows and I do want to buy popcorn and hot dogs I mean that's like you know bring the family nothing wrong with going out to a movie every week but that can add up oh, and yeah. maybe for me my hobby, Magic the Gathering, my love, Commander. I'm eyeing that guy's cradle. It's Christmas time. I had a good year at work. I've saved up my money. I don't buy golf clubs, things like that. And is it wrong of me to show up and I have in my elf ball deck uh, uh, been like, guess what I got? It's my guy's cradle. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot of people out there that I think recoil at that. Yeah. We start even getting accusations of pain pay to win is that pay to win is that fair of me to say the card's legal in the format i bought the card that's legal in the format with my money that that this is my hobby what's wrong with me doing that is there something wrong with me buying that guy's cradle uh short answer no okay um longer answer first of all let's be clear it's a collectible card game of course it's pay to win right. cards are cards have it's arbitrary value and it's made up value, but they have value. Right. And, and there's a reason some cards are more desired and more expensive than others. I think where it comes in well is it you know the the, the pay to win being used as a pejorative, right? Like well, you're 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 just you're a whale and, and I'm a, I'm a little minnow, and it's like that can be a thing. Um, but I think for me the issue is rarely with a card. It's in isolation. Right. It's rarely with a single card or an effect on a card. I'll give an example. I I I lashed out very strongly and I and I have since calmed a bit when Tevish Zot was revealed okay. in Commander Legends. And you know, I think the tweet that I that I made was convince me why I shouldn't hate this card and everything it stands for, you won't. Um and I think what got lost in there is the what it stands for part. Mm -hmm. um, and what I tried to explain, I didn't do a great job at it, but I've, I've been able to articulate a little bit more clearly now is the, that ultimate ability, steal all the commanders, right? Right. I don't like it. I find, I, Dave, only right. find that unfun. Um, that to me is going to, is going to bring down my level of enjoyment in a commander game. But that in and of itself doesn't mean the card shouldn't exist or it should be banned or anything like that. To me, it's what it represents. And right. I think, and I think that's where, that's where my concern really comes in. And, and what it represents to me is when, with all of this product being designed, you know, not just for the, for magic in general with standard sets and things like that, but this is a specific two commander product. The format is necessarily having a pressure exerted on it um, from wizards who are, you know, what they'll never say it out loud, but what it says is, we printed this card, therefore you should play it, therefore you should play Commander this way. So, so, so that for me is where my concern comes in because I have not been playing Magic very long. It's been less than five years. Okay. Um, I made a grave mistake in 1995 and walked into my LGS, which is dearly departed two blocks from my home, um, and saw it was, it was probably unlimited or revised magic packs next to Star Wars CCG packs from Decipher. Right. I picked Star Wars. Ah. Uh, and I stayed in until yeah. that game died a slow, painful death. So I didn't get into magic until very late in the game. So I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of these cards. I'm not a long vested player, though there certainly are. But what drew me into magic was Commander because it was pitched to me as, this is the format where you can do whatever the heck you want. You don't have to play the best cards. You don't have to have the strongest. You don't have to win ever. You just get to have fun. You get to express yourself. Your personality gets to come through. And right. Um, and so I love that. And I will always sure. treasure that. But the cards that get made are a part of the format. And these cards, some of them, carry with them a pressure to push things more up, to up the competitive level a bit more. than some, some players, and certainly I don't speak for everybody, I don't speak for anybody but myself. Some players find that a little uncomfortable, and I, I find that a little uncomfortable. Sure. 
I, I think that there's that great contradiction because we do want Commander to be the format where we express our personality and our deck building right on down. I mean, I love it. I'm all about that. I need to make sure that the basic lands in my Commander deck are from the plane as my Commander and right. match. That's big for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I need to make other flourishes. Like, I will have cards that are not very good in some of my commander decks simply because the artwork is on theme for my commander or what the card, the set it was from, all kinds of aspects like that. And then I'm also simultaneously as part of the contradiction, I do want to win. Sure. And I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with me getting that guy as cradle looking back. And I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with me playing Tevish Zat. Mm -hmm. I actually, well, Tevish Zat, I don't think is by itself in isolation broken. It's more pushing us in that direction towards a style of competitive play. And a lot of the people at Wizards of the Coast who are designing these cards didn't even necessarily play Commander most of their Magic careers. They were uh, 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 competitive players, right. and so they're really good. What are we gonna do for the new set? Ooh, let's have a card that does this. That's fun for competitive standard. Hey guys, it's the year of Commander. Commander's what's selling. Let's go ahead and design some cards. Sure, let me look at what Commander is. Oh, it doesn't have this, it doesn't have this. What about stealing your opponent's you know, uh, Commander? That's a powerful effect, and yes. mm, do we really need that? What is wrong, though, with being competitive in Commander without hitting the CEDH level? Isn't this a puzzle for me to solve? I have the cards I own, the cards that are coming out, I'm looking at them, and I'm just wanting to put together, am I, why shouldn't I play a fully optimized deck and bring a fully optimized deck in to my playgroup? The it's answer. a game, right? Yes. I'm playing to win. Yes. And, when we play I Monopoly, I don't I don't choose not to buy a property because it would just make me winning the game too easy. Sure. I think my answer to that is always some form of there's nothing inherently wrong with that. It is a game and there and there should be a winner. Some <laughs> games end in draws or some games go on forever and we say we're done, we're going home. But games gotta end. Right. Like that's become a cliche for us. But game's got to end, right? So somebody's got to win, which means three people are going to lose. There's nothing wrong with that. And of course, our, our it feels good to win a game of Commander, you know, especially if it is a deck that is close to our heart and soul and we worked really hard on it and it means something to us. My condition on that is, for me, Commander, the, 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 the imperative of Rule Zero, and for people who may not know, Rule Zero is sort of the underpinning of Commander created by the Rules Committee back when Commander first became a thing. Mm -hmm. And what Rule Zero basically says is you can do whatever the heck you want just so long as everybody has fun. It's the everybody has fun part. And that, that part is really important to me. When I sit down to play a game of Commander, I... It, it's important to me that my fun doesn't come at the expense of your fun. Mm -hmm. And I think it's oversimplifying it to say, well, naturally the person who won had more fun than the person who lost. That's not necessarily true in a game of Commander because for me, the perfect game of Commander is one where everybody's deck gets to do what we want it to do. Everybody gets to make their big fun play or their big splashy play. And then at the end, and then, and then the game ends. Right. Like, however it ends, right? Where I don't have fun is when somebody else having their fun means I don't get to play at all, or the game ends in three turns before I've gotten to do anything. Okay. Um, and so that's where it, it, you know, there's nothing wrong at all in isolation with you playing your fully optimized deck. I would never say that. The key is making sure that the other three people you're playing with understand that you're playing a fully optimized sure. deck and that they are prepared to exist in that ecosystem with it. That sounds to me then that you don't, have a problem with necessarily an arms race because you're simply defining types of gameplay or uh, types of cards and card effects that you consider to be unfun. And so it's not so much I'm upgrading to better ramp or better removal that you uh, objected to at all there, but rather just styles of play that you know, you said steal your commander, win in, in just a couple turns. Uh, that's part of the problem with Jeweled Lotus is, is nine times out of ten it doesn't do anything. Right. But the one time it does do something, it's it's it not fun. Lot. It does a lot. And, and it's not fun. But how do we define that 
fun. I mean, what if I said, I think it's hilarious that I'm gonna steal your commander? What if I said, I feel that something that is unfun about commander is that there's no way to ever stop anybody's commander and, and that having the ability to say, ah, guess what, I've turned off your commander, now you have to play with the other 99 cards in your deck instead of just relying on this can always get it back. For example, the tuck rule change, for those who uh, were, are unfamiliar with that, that you used to be able to do a trick, which is tuck or shuffle uh, a person's commander into the deck without them having the ability to redirect it to the command zone, and th that created an arms race of everybody felt the need to put in cards that had tuck effects if they could. Ironically, most of the cards that had tuck effects were in white, uh, which gave a, a lack of balance. Uh, this is why <laughs> I thought it was good. But I thought that was good. That was what white did. And people at the time were saying, we need tuck effects in other colors. And they ended up saying, no, we're going to change the rules so that you can't tuck someone's commander. And then Oubliette came out, and now Oubliette can stop your commander from returning to the command zone. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. It's, it's, no it's, one ever talks about it. No one it. ever talks about Oubliette. <laughs> but that's all arms, but that was arms race with, yep. the, with the, the tuck effects as well. Who defines that? And, 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 and how do I know then that it's the difference between upgrading and, and, and Tevish Zat? And well, this seems like, like you're defining my fun. I want to play Tevish Zat. Yep. They came out with Tevish Zat. It looks cool. It's flavorful. It isn't overpowered you yourself said, right. so you don't like that I steal your commander? No offense, but tough. That's the game. Sure. I don't like that your commander keeps coming out. It costs two, and you bring it out every turn, and if I destroy it, you return it. So what's the problem with that? Then. Yeah, I, I, and again, I, nothing. Okay. I, 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 and great, I, great. We're done. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah, good video. Yeah. See but no, no, what, what, no. Nothing. But. But I but. think I think again, where where I get a little uncomfortable is if you sit down with Tevish Sad as your commander, I'm not gonna pick up my play mat and walk away. Right. I will if you play a stack stack. But that's a story for another time. It, it again, I don't find the card itself to be worth. I mean. Let's let's be realistic about Commander. There are how many thousands of cards that are legal in this format? At least 1,000. And only a couple dozen are banned? A few dozen are banned? Sure. And I think the ones that are banned are banned for good reason. Mm -hmm. And I think the ones that aren't banned probably don't need to be. I mean, we could we could do 10 hours of content sure. on what to ban and what not to. We're not doing that. Commander is a format of self-governance. And that's by design. And I think and the Rules Committee has made that clear over the years, millions upon millions of times. This is this is a this was a fan player created format, which is meant to be where the experience is meant to be governed by the players. And so then it is incumbent upon us to have those discussions and and to, you know, I, I think I think what happens um, where a lot of my concern comes in is with the playing with strangers. So that's not as big of a deal right now because obviously we're in we're in the pandemic, and so right. we're not we're not having Magic Fest or Command Fest or uh, LGS Commander Nights and things like that. So you're less likely to encounter completely new people you never played with before. But that's where some of the trouble becomes in because, as you said, who's defining each other's fun? Like, and and you know, at what point does someone? Is it out of bounds to suggest that someone shouldn't play a card or play a deck? Right. It's a thorny question, and I don't have a glib answer for it. I wish I did. I don't think anybody does. I think what it comes down to, though, is, you know, and as it relates to the arms races, at a time when Commander is the most popular format in the game, and it's, and it's, and it's selling product, like, there's no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, and then Wizards, as a capitalistic corporation is want to do says well we need to make some money off of that so here's commander legends and here's this and here's that if you're a new player either new to magic altogether or an, an invested magic player who's trying out commander for the first time and you see what wizards is giving us now what's the cue you're going to take from that well this is how i'm supposed to play just in the past couple of years we've gotten commanders like Chulain and corvold and golos that are ubiquitous now and mm -hmm. i think commander is a format where in my opinion ubiquity is a bad thing but if you're coming in fresh and you haven't been playing commander forever you weren't around for when it was still the weird quirky cousin of magic what would lead you to believe that you shouldn't be playing the chulains and the goloses and the corvolts nothing because this is what this is what wizards is telling you is fun for this format and this is what eda trek and twitter and reddit right. are telling you is fun for this format so of course you're gonna think that but then here's me 
who's, you know, an old timer, you know, like with the get off my lawn, you darn true lanes of the world. And I'm just sitting here with my mono white hot Daxo stack wanting to gain life and do nothing with it. Right. And have a great time. And that's where our conflict comes in. It seems like that's on you then. I mean, I, I, I feel it like, is. like it's fair to say then that's on you. Then it, it, it seems very disappointing that I look at Chulain and it's a flavorful card. It's it's not an I win card. I, I, I did make reference to Chulain as an example of a card that I, uh, I personally might consider too powerful uh, uh, for Commander, despite not being banned, but I'm I'm just trying to you know like like see that other side sure. of the, the vantage point, and and it just seems like well you're the one choosing to play Hot Daxos, mm -hmm. I'm choosing to play Chulain. If you're not having fun with Hot Daxos sitting down against Chulain, uh, uh, then it seems like that's on you. It is, and I. Mm -hmm. have no problem right. playing Hot Daxos in whatever environment. I know that deck's not going to win. Sure. It's my signature deck. It's the deck that, sure. it's the yeah, deck I've that got I those. love. We've got those, They're right? merfolk, yes. <laughs> no. I have those, right. They don't win, I get sad. But right. yes, there so, you go, so but to, I still play them. To give you an example of what I'm talking about, you know, Daxos Blessed by the Sun is all about life gain. Right. White's good at that. What's a great card to use with life gain to win a commander game? Aetherflux Reservoir. Right. Guess what's not in my Hot Daxos deck? Aetherflux Reservoir. I find because I find that as a win right. con, I find it boring. Um, I've lost to it and won with it enough right. times that I'm just like, this is I, I don't get so so my my deck really is gain a bunch of life and hope for the best. Do you run Felidar Sovereign? Nope. So again, it's like, well, there you go. That 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 But that's on me. Right. And I get and I get that. I think where I worry is I make that choice and I'm conscious of it and I I accept the mm -hmm. consequences. Mm -hmm. But there are a great many players of all ages and ability levels and investment in this game who may not who may who may have been told accurately that commander is the place to do whatever the heck you want. Sure. No, and no, then no. they sit down and with it with a win more against a win more deck and they're like, oh well, this wasn't that much fun for me. I guess the difference is, is that I'm not going to tell you, well, then you should run uh, Aetherworks or you should run Felidar Sovereign, but your position is telling me I shouldn't run uh, Chulain or or uh, uh, Tevisat uh, or, or get that Cradle. And I'm beginning to, the more I hear about the arms race issue, I almost feel like for a long time, even I have in previous episodes advocated Keep your deck at 70, 80% optimized. I've advocated that, but mm -hmm. as we go on, I guess I kind of, my reaction to Wizards blowing the lid off of the format is to say, well, to hell with it. I'm just going to get what I want to get and do what I want to do, and you get what you get and do what you want to do, and it's not my fault that Wizards is making these cards. It's not my fault that the older cards that are, are are bonkers like this aren't banned. I mean, if Guy's Cradle isn't banned, then ban it, you know? Or Then if it's not banned, then let me buy it. And if I am so fortunate as to be able to afford it or to have been playing when it was just in $4 packs and to have one in my, my binder and stuff, and to maybe just say, well, the arms race isn't on the players, it's on Wizards of the Coast. And if Wizards of the Coast does not want to have the game become this degenerate arms race, then they need to actually curate the format instead of just exploit the format for financial gain. They sh can do both. I'm not saying wizards can't make money. Yep. They can make money, they will make money, but they need to actually watch what they're doing. We said we felt like they did watch what they were doing with Legends minus one or two little iffy things. Yep. So, I don't know. Let, let's talk then within... The, the, I can't control what Wizards does. If God knows I've tried. <laughs> but 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 I can't control the wind, by which I mean Wizards of the Coast. My, why not yell at the wind? Uh, but I've done that. I have a whole <laughs> series where I do that. I'm going to put that aside. Calm Blue Ocean, Calm Blue Ocean, Calm Blue Ocean. Uh, let's talk about our playgroup. I'm in my playgroup. You're in the playgroup. You and I are in the playgroup. Yep. How do we respond to that arms race? What, are, what? How do we prevent an arms race without you telling me? Like, I look at Chulain. Listen, I was an English major. Chulain's got books. I was a narr I was a fiction writer. I wrote novels and short stories. Chulain's the teller of tales. I'm I'm old. Chulain's old. It's like we got all this in common. He's in great colors. 
I want to run this card. Do I have to make the deck worse running it? What is this? Well, how do we as players deal with that arms race then? What are we doing? I think this is something that's going to be unique to each play group, but I think where where I and, and sort of my main play group have always come down on it is if you want to build a deck or you want to try out a card, by all means, build the deck, try out the card. Let's see how it goes because, and this is, I don't want to shock you or anyone else, we overreact to cards when they're spoiled. That's in Commander especially. I, I know. Panharmonicon is still waiting for its day one ban. And so is, remember as foretold, that's a card. Remember that, how that was gonna break Commander? No comment. Exactly. So I said it too, don't worry. So we do that, right? right. In theory, these cards, when you just see them on a screen on, pre, on a spoiler day, it's like, oh my gosh, this is insane. Right. In practice, it's not always that way. So I'm a big supporter of build the deck. Let's play it out. Let's see what happens. I did that um, with, with my with my legacy play, not legacy, like the format, but my legacy play group with, I had a Brago deck mm -hmm. that I was still very new to Magic and Commander. And I'm like, this Blink thing seems fun. Like I could do lots of fun stuff with this. And so, you know, I, I kind of put it together here and there. And then I started playing it and it won every game. I kept falling butt backwards into infinite combos that I didn't know were a thing because I didn't know what infinite combos were. I was, I was blinking um, uh, Stonehorn Dignitary so many times that no one ever got a combat. I was blinking Lavinia the 10th and detaining right. everything. And I'm like, this is fun. And they're like, no, it's really not. So it was one of those things where it was fun until it wasn't. And then the choice became, okay, so what do I do to this deck to, eat, to make it so that everyone else will not hate me or it off the table or worst case scenario, refuse to play with me? Um, or do I just kill the deck? Mm. I decided to kill the deck because mm -hmm. I think Brago is an example of a commander that there's almost no way to play it fair. Mm -hmm. Because if you're playing it fair, you're playing a bad deck that's not ever going to be comp like competitive at all. Right. Um, and I and I again, I, I'm not I'm not naive enough to say I don't want to ever win commander games. Of course I do. But I think in your example, I think I think that's where if you if we have an established play group, if we've been playing together for a long time, mm -hmm. we should be able to have those conversations without people's feelings getting hurt. Sure. Um, it shouldn't be personal. It's right. not a person like you're not a bad person because you want to play two lane. That's not it at all. Um, it's it's finding that balance point in a play group. And that's a tricky thing to do. And for some playgroups, it takes years. For some playgroups, it never happens. Yeah. Where everybody is on the same page about what fun is and, like, what the arms race is, right? So, you know, for example, if, if you're in my playgroup and you have a two-lane deck and the next set comes out has an absolutely killer anti-two-lane card, is it incumbent upon me then to build a deck around that card or put it in a deck that I have? Is it wrong for me to do that? Uh, that's a that's actually a really good point, which is I actually think that that building, putting in cards to specifically hose a deck that someone in your playgroup uses is is very problematic. Where where it's it's simply like, well, I've got a deck that makes you sacrifice creatures, mm -hmm. and then so you just intentionally put in a card that says it'll it'll stop me from sacrificing creatures right. and 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 it's turning off my deck but you wouldn't normally have that card in there right I think that what we really need is more commander decks I, I think that what you need is simply five six seven eight nine ten commander decks in your library and so if I've got my true lane deck you don't need to put anti true lane tech in your deck against my true lane deck because I'm not playing it every time we play commander. I'm just saying, oh, I'm gonna take out true lane today and, and we'll get a game in and then you know what? Let's get another game. Rotate decks, change places. <laughs> and so you will, will not have to deal with it all the time. It's not gonna win every time. I get to have that deck however I want it and we simply are just changing and rotating a lot and we're not using the same decks up against each other. Okay, fine. I'm going to do this. I'm going to see what this is like. I, I just think having multiple decks, that's why one thing I even do, I mean, I, I know it's a little easier for me because I have to review them, but I have a wide collection of just pre-constructed decks with zero changes in them at, because it's every now and then I just go, all right, here, it's, it's that Anala Wizards pre-con deck. It, it's not been optimized. It's not had any changes. Maybe I swapped out a card or two, but that might be it. And it's just something different. And then you get a different experience. And and that's very doable, especially since they're now releasing commander decks that are $20, $25 each. 
boy, that doesn't make it so that it's that cost prohibitive mm -hmm. uh, uh, as, as you know, uh, it used to be. So I think that just having a lot of decks and playing with each other's decks, communicating with the play group, obviously, you don't, the solution to the arms race is much like the real arms races. Let's just not have it at all. Yeah. We don't have to make rules saying you can't upgrade your deck. We don't have to make rules saying you can't run these commanders or you can't have the Stonehorn Dignitary. I don't care that you've got the Stonehorn Dignitary in there because that's one deck you have of 10 and I have 10 and we're just going around like this, like musical chairs. Maybe one week you'll take this, the, the deck with the Stonehorn combo and say, here, do you want to give it a whirl? And yeah. I'll be like, you know what? I've never resolved that combo. I'm going to try for that. That'll be fun. Yeah, I think I think you said it well. The best the best way to avoid the, the best way to solve the arms race is to just refuse to be a part of it. But the problem is if only wishing made it so, right? I think <laughs> I think I think what happens is we end up in a series of logical fallacies um that kind of spring from not just the 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 onslaught of of new cards and more powerful cards, but also the dynamics of Magic in general and Commander in specific, and even more specifically, what Commander is evolving into. And I've written about how I think Commander is trending, because of everything we've talked about, inexorably in a more competitive direction. Oh, yes. And I don't, and, and let me be clear, I don't think that is inherently a bad thing. I think, you know, I am a big, I, I can't play CEDH, I'm not smart enough. Um, I freely admit that. Um, but I am the biggest proponent of CDH that you'll find because CDH is Commander. It's right. not a different format. It's right. not better or worse. Right. It's different. It's a different spin on Rule Zero. Everybody's there for a different reason. The objective, the idea of fun is very different. I think what's happening as a result of this arms race is very slowly with every product, we're getting pushed closer and closer toward those two things meeting. Yeah. And again, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think I think where the where the trouble comes in is is we get into these logical fallacies like well, if I, I'll keep using Chulane just because it's on top of my head, but if I can play Chulane, why would I play any other commander that does similar things? Because you want to. Right. That's the answer. Right. Like, I, I, it, but then you'll have people say, "Well, ch but Julian's here. I mean, it's the best option. I should just use it. Then use it." Right. But it, it, we we tie ourselves in knots and we create these arguments and these disagreements and these sort of these 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 shifts in our in our play groups, ultimately over nothing. We're all still there for the same reason. We want to have a good time playing magic with each other. It's just that. I think all of these things, we're, we have a hard time sorting through sort of what's real and what's not. And it's, there's, there's perceived arms race and perceived power creep and perceived all of these things. And there's actual all of those things. Right. And getting to the bottom of where those things resolve is the, is the really tricky part. And that's where if you're fortunate enough to have a long established play group where everybody's on the same page, you can solve these issues in moments. You know, everybody, you know, these kind of play groups, you have your own, you have your own ban list that things come off or things go on. You have your own, okay, well, if you're if you're playing Chulane, then I'm playing Brago. Um, <laughs> and if not, then not, right? right. Like, um, you know, uh, how we mulligan, how we, you know, resolve the, uh, uh, whatever. You have those things. And that's, again, that's what Commander was always meant to be. I think where we get ourselves into trouble as players, individual players in a group ecosystem is trying to square all these circles and, and make all of these things that are contradictory and nonsensical sometimes and just uh, just ridiculous, walking dead, um, make these things fit into our brains and, 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 and make sense to us. We can't sometimes. And part of that is just there's so much stuff all the time. Right. Like, like, how long do we get to be excited about a new commander before the next exciting new commander is out? Three weeks now? If you're lucky. If we're lucky? Like, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's harder than it's ever been to wrap our heads around all of this stuff. And I think what that leads to is the perceived arms race. That feeling like, I have to, I, I can't keep up. I need right. to be doing more. I have to keep up. I have to get that cradle. I right. have to do this. I have to do that. That's not real. There's no one... Um, holding any sort of pressure to our heads that says you must do this. Not even wizards. Right. Um, but it can feel that way. And I think, <laughs> and I think that's where, you know, it, it, perception is reality. And that's where a lot of this angst comes from. And I see this in the discourse, and you, I know you see it too. 
feelings get really heated and emotions get into it. And, and because self-expression and personal viewpoints are a big part of this format, it gets messy because people get really passionate. And I love that about Commander. I love that about its players. I love that about the creators. I love that about the rules committee. Everybody loves this format and loves playing it, but that necessarily gets messy sometimes. And I think all of this stuff that's just being bombarded upon us just exacerbates that so much. I think the other thing that I would suggest to any groups that are having trouble with an arms race, or if you're just the lone person in your group feeling that there's an arms race going on and not sure what to do about it or even how to talk to your playgroup, obviously, talk to your playgroup is the rule zero in my book of commanders. Just talk to your playgroup and be reasonable and don't be jerks. But failing that, shifting what the point of Commander Knight is or what the perceived way to win is can be very helpful, by which I mean, if you haven't already checked out, and I have a video on this, a point system. Point systems are a great way to mix up Commander gameplay because you're getting one point for winning a game, but there's all these other things you do during a game that get you points. And so it might, for example, say, go your entire game without once bringing your commander out of the command zone, get five points, uh, be the second to last person to lose, get three points, win on turn three, lose two points, go infinite, lose one point, and you can also customize those points. Now, in my video, I have a whole template of ones that we researched and, and really provide a good experience, and you randomly pick them before each game to make each game different, but the point system, I feel, answers the arms race really well because it doesn't matter. I've got a Gaia's Cradle deck, and you've got a pre-con, but we're both trying to accomplish the goal of uh, 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 have... 10 creatures on the battlefield at the same time or something like that, some other factor like that to, to win these points. And then you keep track of them over a season, over, all right, our play group gets together every week. Well, for the month of November, we're keeping a tally of points. And then at the end of November, we'll see who the winner is. And it's not just an individual game. And so those different ways that you can change what it means to play and to win Commander can be great answers where then it doesn't matter that I've souped up my have a set deck or all. Yeah, and I, I, I point systems I think are, are are awesome because like you said, they can be customized to infinity. Sure. Um, another one I really like, and 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 you've just talked about this is plane chase. Plane chase is a fantastic way to spice up commander because it it, it, it levels the playing field between decks that may on the surface have disparate power levels. It lets your decks do things they normally wouldn't. And it's always just really fun to make a bunch of goats if you get the goat plane. But plane chase is another way. I, I think I think point systems, plane chase, um, you know, uh, you know, some some kind of off the wall house rules. Like you know, we're all starting at one life, right. um, or, or or we have a five turn cap, and it's whoever's whatever. Or um, you know, your commander is locked in, in jail. You can't cast your commander. Or that's called Canadian Highlander. Sure. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. Um, you know. It, it, Stuff like that. It, it's I, I. I think again. You know, it, it can that logical fallacy that there is one objective in a game of Commander, and that sure. is to win, be the last person standing. Not necessarily. I mean, yes, but also not really. Like it can be whatever we want it to be. Right. And we can. You can play the same, same your same deck or your same deck or our same group of decks a million times, but change it every time. And it'll help keep things from getting boring. It'll definitely mitigate um, that arms race. It's another thing you can you can make a point system where you get uh, you gain point you get points if you don't use certain cards or if you if you right. pick you know everything's common or everything you do popper or whatever. You know? Well, that's a whole other popper commanders a whole that'll be a whole other video. But I think that also you know if you are doing the point system with your group, for example, you don't like the steal your commander effect of Tevis set. I've got a Tevis set. You can literally just maybe there's a system you put into place where you get to nominate a new rule. Maybe if you win uh, uh, one season then the thing is is that you get to at least nominate a new rule yeah. to be added. And you go, I want it to be negative one point for stealing a commander. That doesn't stop me from stealing a commander at all because I might be gaining points in other things. And it so it's like, sure, I'll it. still steal the commander, but 
it, it adds an interesting element to the mix. At the end of the day, communicate with your group. I would worry I, I would worry less about the arms race. I mean, we could sit here and go through, I think it would be absurd to go through a list and be like, okay, question, putting Crater Hoof Behemoth in your deck, is this okay or not okay? Question, putting you know the uh, Exquisite Blood combo in your deck, is this okay or not okay? Putting Stonehorn Dignitary or, or Approach of the Second Sun in every white deck, uh, uh, is this okay? And it's, it's like, that's a silly way that I think is more on wizards to be thinking about if they want to be printing those cards and putting that into the pool and the responsibility is on them. Us as players, the responsibility is to have fun and to not stifle another person's fun uh, in so doing and to find that. And, and that's really the best solution to the arms race is making that your motto. And whether that means 70 to 80% optimized decks, whether that means not running a guy's cradle or not caring that you run a guy's cradle. You've got a guy's cradle, no problem. I've got a ghost quarter. It's just, it's like, boom, what now? Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 the, the, that card cost me 20 cents. <laughs> how, how, how'd you like that guy's cradle? How much was it? The ghost quarter was 20 cents. So I got 400 of in this box. Yeah. There I, you I, go. I, I think you're, I think you, you, you said what I, will preach until my lungs collapse. And that is, my fun and your fun are almost never mutually exclusive. If you take five minutes, and it really just is five minutes, to talk to people before you play a game, you can avoid those feel bads. You can avoid, you can find, there is almost always, a, I'll say almost because, you know, the law of big numbers or whatever. There's almost always a way to square all those circles and say, okay, well, if you're gonna do that, then I'll do this and it'll be fine. But if you just sit down and then let it happen, and then you're like, I can't believe this this awful thing happened. Well, of course. Because, right. I mean, it really, talk to people. Talk to people, talk to people, talk to people. And then Wizards can print whatever it's going to print, which it's going to, no matter how much you and I talk about it. <laughs> they're going to print what they're going to print. Um, let them do that. We're still going to find the way to have fun. And the key to that is just being human beings, interacting with each other. I think that's fantastic. Well, Dave, thank you so much for joining us here today. If people want to find more from you, uh, I, of course, will have links in this video's description, but where can people find you? I do write about Commander every Friday for CoolStuffInc.com, so just go to CoolStuffInc and search for Dave Kosin in the author box, and you'll find me. Um, I'm also uh, very active on Twitter, uh, which the link is going to be down there. Sure. Um, please don't pronounce the Twitter username uh, phonetically. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we, got, we got a family channel here, family channel here. All right, yes, yes, yes. So you want to get a game of Commander? Uh, can we please? I got to warn you, though, we were talking about arms race, so I just souped up my Merfolk deck last weekend. Sig has been optimized. I wouldn't worry about it, Professor. You're not going to win an arms race with a Nerf gun, no matter how big the darts are. If you hold up seven mana and a player is playing blue, what do you suspect? Seven mana and on blue, you're gonna absolutely get Cyclonic Rifted until they eventually ban it. Not not when you're playing against Ken. Cause like, I don't, sometimes I just hold it up just because, just to scare you. And I'll be like, yeah, go yeah. ahead, put down something. And then as soon as it get back to me, yeah, I don't have nothing. I'm just playing around with you. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, one thing I noticed specifically about Numont, I'm not scared of Cyclonic Rift when Seven Mana is up. He has Angel of the Dire Hour. This is a seven mana, five and two white uh, flash. When it enters the battlefield, exile all target attacking creatures. Got to conceal those intentions, baby.